I want to talk for a moment about convenient conviction. You know what I'm talking about. You probably have some of that yourself. I know loads of people who have those convenient convictions. I have family members, you know, one of whom is, you know, claiming to be a vegetarian. And that person cannot resist the occasional piece of pork, the occasional... <laughs> When asked, and that person is at a level of, like, awareness and feeling like, I can do this, the answer is, nah, no one's watching except maybe, you know, the all-being, uh, you know, big superpower up there is watching them. And yet, that's convenient if this person says, hmm, yeah, a nice piece of, uh, Fleskestai, a nice piece of pork, a nice burger, occasionally, a piece of chicken, occasionally. That's convenient. And here's why. <clears throat> when you have a conviction that you truly believe in, when things are going well, it's easy. When things get tough, your resolve crumbles, just a little or maybe a lot, and then you'll do anything. If you have a conviction and you truly believe in this, you can go for a long time. You can go on a diet, some kind of diet. I'm not going to get into the issue of whether or not diets work, whether or not they actually work. <coughs> When it's going fine, you can do this. When it's not going fine and your life is rough and your resolve is low and you feel frustrated or put upon by all sorts of other things and you're starting to feel pressure, coming from other places, you will also have that pressure translate into your resolve for your convictions that you think you actually believe in. At which point, you will cave. You will give in. You will not stand with your convictions because you want the dopamine hit, the good feed of your soul that makes it convenient and friendly and nice. If you're not having chocolate or you're not having ice cream, let's say... You have a lactose intolerance. I know people who I've spoken with before who had a lactose intolerance and they said, ooh, but I can't resist ice cream. I say, <laughs> you're absolutely in the category of convenient convictions. If you need to feel healthy by staying away from certain things and yet you can't resist, you can't resist. That's when you are allowing yourself to conveniently cave. And those are convenient convictions. I had a roommate a long time ago. She was a vegetarian. I think she might have even been a vegan. Except she couldn't resist breakfast sausage. <laughs> and... She would have a coffee clatch at our apartment and she had all of her feminist friends around who were doing their things and they had this really good feminine energy support group and they were vegans. And there she was. And they would be talking about things and I was just kind of assisting my roommate, you know, cleaning up, keeping things nice being part of their thing, but being in the sidelines, I didn't need to be part of their thing. It was just, you know, she was, she was renting from me. So it was actually, you know, I was, I was the lease holder and, uh, and they would talk about all that stuff, including, including her. <laughs> and sometimes I would give her a little nod of the eyebrows, like, I hear you. I know you, you know, I do. What is this? 
just because you want to feel like you're part of some larger movement, if you don't admit to yourself and others that your convenient convictions are actually making you be a wannabe who is trying, instead of the person who you pretend to comport yourself as. Who are you fooling? You're certainly not fooling anyone who believes you and then discovers that you are weak because eventually that stuff will out. You're not fooling yourself, but I think you're trying to. That's why I just want you to think about this. You see, here's the issue. The phrase is simple, and I love this phrase. If you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. If you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. You have to be able to recognize the issues when your life is hard that make your conviction the thing that if you don't cave, you actually are standing for something. I have often explained that money must not be the end-all, be-all of your mission in life. If it is, you're a whore. And I make a, I distinguish between being a whore and being a prostitute. Prostitutes can have a heart of gold. They can have a larger mission. You know, uh, it's an age-old profession, goods for services. And there are people on Wall Street, for example, that's a good place to name as a den of whores. Not all, but many. Because Wall Street is about money and money often breeds greed and greed makes you into the person who caves toward money only. When you are weak, even if you have some attempt at better morals, and when you cave, it is because you are choosing the things, the issues, the topics, the direction that will move you away from your moral compass. If you just plain invest in anything, and those companies, those corporations, have zero moral compass, some of them, many of them. And if you simply make your own money by investing in them without having your own moral compass and standing for what you truly believe in so that you are investing in businesses that you, whose mission and philosophical stance on things you support, you're caving. You're just a whore for money. The issue is to remove your inability to stand with what you truly believe in. Your mission, your main issue, is to be able to galvanize your own understanding of what it is you truly believe so that when things are difficult for you, you can fall back on your moral principles and your convictions, and you will not cave, and you will move forward with what you truly believe in, so that will nurture your own sense of self. If you can't resist ice cream, and it makes your body feel bad afterwards, and maybe even gives you like, you know, horrible gas or diarrhea or whatever it is, and you compromise other people 
around you and feel shame because you know where that compromise is coming from and the discomfort that you have inflicted upon yourself and potentially others. <clears throat> you know it affects you. Strengthen your resolve so that you can be the best self when times are tough. Don't let temptation when you're weak erode your resolve for the things you believe in. The last thing I'll say about this is that when you're doing this, you will be able to recognize incoming potential input and influence for what it is, and you will be able to see that it is there as a temptation against your personal resolve, and you will be able to allow your own inner strength, your own inner metal, to keep you on your straight and narrow path. I'm sure this makes sense, right? Let me know in the comments that this makes sense. There are far too many of your peers, and you know it. Peers, colleagues, family, friends. With convenient convictions. And you can actually be the pirate rebel who knows him or herself enough to be above that or work toward being above that.